That was my fault. Misjudged the turn. Misjudged the stop sign and rolled right through. <laughs> Haven't ridden the EC in about two weeks. So it takes a few kilometers to get accustomed to it again. Right now I find I'm good to acceleration, but my braking isn't very good. Testing out the new pit zoom helmet mirror. So at the introductory price of $20 US plus $5 US shipping, it's definitely a steal because there were other helmets which cost a lot more. More than $25. Like my third eye mirror for my helmet is already 35. So this being 25 US is a steal because you get three separate mounts, three separate arms, two different mirrors. You got a wide angle, you got a flat mirror. Three, three or four different mounts. 
and essentially got two complete sets of mirrors. So you have a flat mirror and a wide angle mirror. You got three arms, so you could mount one shorter arm and a longer arm with a different helmet. So right now I'm using the wide angle because my third eye was a just a flat mirror, so it had a very narrow field of view. And it was a very short arm. The wide angle is really nice. You can see a lot more in my rear view. I'm using the longest arm. Because I need to pivot it out around my helmet. So I need it to be further out. If it's too close, it's my helmet's blocking the view. Okay, let's go. Let's not get stuck in traffic. So right now, like I was saying, my legs are not used to riding UC after a couple weeks being away on vacation. Also not being going to the gym. So I'm a little wobbly. Like I'm, I'm going at a decent rate, but I feel like I don't have much control. My slowing down is not that great. So I gotta be careful when I go down this steeper hill here. sitting at sketchy intersections you can really see 180 degrees what's behind you <clears throat> something in the intersection there K. Let's take it easy. Yeah, my legs feel a little bit like jello right now. Trying to get the muscles used to it again. Plus, I also went to the gym. my nagging cough. I was just in Hawaii last week and that's where I got COVID. I think I got it at the Dull Pineapple Plantation. Because you don't want to travel to Hawaii like what we did, which is in the summer. It's the most crowded when everyone's off on vacation. So the Dull Pineapple Plantation is packed in Oahu. I think that's where I got my COVID from. Let's be careful here. Let's make sure we carve down the hill. So I purposely am further back on the pedals. Because sometimes you hit this here, this bump, and it just sends you flying forward. Then you lose control. 
then you hit the second driveway here, which has another unpleasant bump. It just sends you rocketing forward, which is not what you want when you're going down a steep hill. Up. When you're starting from a stop, what I tend to do, which is a bad habit, is I'm looking at my feet. <coughs> you just want to look straight ahead. So it becomes second nature. Because if you're looking down at your feet, you're not looking around you of any turning cars or anything. Before I left on the trip, I pumped my tire up to 30 psi. I was running it low, maybe about 22 or so. <coughs> I find, like, you know, not using it for two weeks, my acceleration is fine. It's just my braking. Do more carving. So yeah, I only set my limit to 32k because I'm scared, and two, I don't want to go so fast that I can't control it. So it's a good kind of like back off, you don't want to overpower the wheel. You know, it's a Sherman, right? Sherman has a lot of power, <laughs> a lot of watts, but not that crazy on torque. So I never want to get to the max of the motor and over torque it have a cutout. Plus it gives you some gives you some more safety net. I don't tend to run my batteries all the way to zero, but just in case you're not trying to like go super fast on a low battery. With the Sherman, this is an OG Sherman version 3, you can get about a hundred kilometers of range. I weigh about 160 pounds. Surprisingly there, I didn't have any tram lining. I tend to have some tram lining on the slant. That's with 30 psi. That was pumped up two weeks ago, so maybe it's gone down to maybe 28 or so. I find the sidewall on this uh, default Kenda is quite stiff. 
So even if you're running at a low PSI, you wouldn't even know it. Unless you're, you know, 200 plus pounds, and then you're doing stairs and potholes. I don't do any of those. So I could, you know, run it at a lower temperature to soak up the bumps. Lower PSI, I mean, not lower temperature. The key thing when you're riding at night, just scan the pavement for any potholes, any debris, because you never know. turning car. That guy has some anger issues. He just smashed down that subway sign. Thought there was like an accident or something. Now let's be careful here for any cars. Watch for cross traffic for people that are not going the right of way. What's the thing about riding at night? Riding at night's great when there's not many people, but it's the summertime, so there's more people. Thank you. out here because it's super dark. Oh, well, it'll light it up very well. Uh, ending. It's a little bit before nine o'clock, and it's already pretty dark. So most of my rides would be night rides now.
Happy boat. behind him. He's a good pace car, so I don't try and go too fast and then run into troubles. <coughs> He's going pretty well on the flats. This is UV dead. Feet are starting to get a little bit uncomfortable. A little bit. So what we'll do is we'll do my usual loop. Randall Island. Lap seat.
just of one observation since it's a wide angle mirror, of course. The cars in my mirror are further than they appear and smaller. So that's the trade off of wide angle. You don't want it too wide, but then you want it wide enough so at least you can see what's behind. Watch out for these taxis. Let's go to the other lane. Cut over. When you cross the rail tracks, you always want to do it at perpendicular angle as much as possible. You don't want to cross it over parallel. You cross it over parallel, you'll tram line. Catch the lip and go flying. <coughs> Looks like they have security here. Just surprising. Let's go sit down for a bit.
Thank you. He's going at a good pace. I don't need to pass him. Legs are loosening up, I'd say. Getting a bit better at absorbing the shot. Isn't it? He's going pretty fast. I'm here. I was, I was able to see him. The thing I found with my third eye mirror, it's a flat mirror. So you have to turn your head to see the 180 degrees. And often people would just sneak by me and I wouldn't even see them. Because my mirror would have this huge blind spot. And if not, I'm not turned a certain, a certain way, I don't see them. Whereas this, I don't have to swivel my head too much, like hardly any. In the default straight ahead position, I can see basically from my 6 o'clock to my 9 o'clock. With my third eye blind, or third eye mirror, it would be like maybe from I can see from 8 o'clock to 7 o'clock, and then I have to swivel my head to get to the 6 o'clock. So it's not optimal. I could see basically in my blind spot, but not directly behind me. So, you know, there would be a cyclist right behind me, dark by, I wouldn't see them, and then, then they're in my other, other blind spot again. It is a little bumpy here. There. Let's be careful going down this. <coughs> Sorry for the coughs. It's either I cough or I chew gum, and you're going to hear a constant chewing like a cow. You don't want to hear that. So I just have the gum in my mouth just for some mint flavor. Let that guy go, and then I'll go. Where that music is coming from.
I don't even know the beeps yet, so I'm keeping them below 32. <laughs> I don't tend to go very fast here anyway. A lot of pedestrians and a lot of turns. And there's this weird bump here. You also gotta be careful here because there's a lot of pedestrians that go in the actual bike lane. There's exhibit A. Also here too on this stretch. Feeling the uh, potholes. So what's this? What's going on here? Can we go through? This is weird. Oh, thank you. That's still a little bit deeper. Yeah. 
right about now that my feet are starting to hurt. Because I find my feet are tensing up at that part of the seawall because it's a bit sketchy. A lot of potholes and... I wasn't going to slow down or stop. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Yeah, I might as well go. Jumping Jeff Farmer says, full force. Turbo mode. These dark streets. You want to be seen as like a headlight from a car. Especially with those roundabouts. The bushes, you can't be seen. <coughs> with getting to start from a stop on the Sherman is don't worry about going forward right away. Is step onto the pedal so that you're balanced first and then put some pressure on the front of the pedal. What I was doing is I was trying to kick off and then, and then it was like running away from me and I wasn't balanced yet. So get on balance and then put forward pressure on it. Don't try and kick off like a skateboard because I found that approach which works for some people, it doesn't work for me. It's up to your preference. What I found is uh, I had my pedals tilted up a little bit, and then when they're tilted up, you get backward braking pressure. So I have them at zero degrees now. That helped a lot. If you have them tilted forward, you'll get even more acceleration at the cost of less braking. And with the Sherman, it's a tank, literally. You need better brake, you need good brakes. So I don't go tilted forward. I'm already fine for acceleration. I'm not a speed demon anyway. Neutral, neutral is fine for me, zero degrees. Yeah, because I had it tilted up, pedals tilted up backwards. Oh, it was hard to start from a stop. As soon as you get on, it just wants to slow down. Get on without looking. Don't look down. Easier said than done, right? Because I find when you're a newbie or not used to a wheel, you look where your feet are, you get on, then you look your feet again, see where they are on the pedals. I think the key to getting good is just not even looking and see how they feel. You'll know right away if your feet are too forward or too back. I don't feel against the path. It seems counterintuitive, like if I'm more back, I have less... If I'm more back on the pedals, I have less uh, suspension with my knees as I travel. when I had my feet more forward, they're right up against the pads, but then the pads are doing the suspension. They seem to be absorbing the bumps better than just if I was uh, more rear on the pads, and then they were, they had some play, and then they would hit the pads. It, it just didn't work out very well. I don't know why. You'd think it'd be reverse, right? You're back on the pads. I mean, you're back on the pedals. You have more space to, like, compress your ankle and your knee, and then that would be your suspension, right? I was getting the exact opposite. Doesn't make any sense. Because you think if you're more forward on the pedal, you're accelerating more, and your shin is right against the pad, so when you hit a bump, you'd have less 
you know, suspension, but I find it's the opposite. The pad is absorbing the bump better than your actual knee does. on the pad. Back there I was more behind on the pad. And those uh, speed bumps are not any problem. Actually, you always carve here. There's a weird kind of washboard thing and like grooves. So like I'm right forward on the pedals right now, and that like bump was no problem. And the road closed. <laughs> sidewalk. question is why. I don't see the work that's being done. Yeah, that makes no sense. There wasn't anything being done on that road.
I'm a big advocate of not having music while you're riding because you need to hear if there's any tire roar from cars at cross streets because sometimes you can't see until it's too late. You need to hear. Look, I have tire roar on my tire, but at least I can still hear what's coming around. Because some people are, you know, walking, biking with headphones in, you can't hear anything. I'm sure you got your tunes going, but you have no situational awareness. Just like when I drive, I don't like to blast the music so loud. My wife likes to blast the music really, really loud. And then I can't hear traffic or, you know, what's going on on the road. When I used to, have a, I used to have a Miata, I would just like to ride with no radio at all. One, it helps you with your shifting. You can hear the revs without even looking. Two, you have situational awareness. Three, it's just fun to listen to your car. You're in a sports car, you're there to hear the engine. <laughs> Look up and go. Let's look and go. Don't look down. Getting more confident with the Sherman. I'm less confident on my V10F. The V10F is a good commuter. You know, it has a good trolley handle, it's more compact, it's lightweight. I put the V11 pedals on it, but they don't go properly. So they're going like this. They're more like this. Too much uh, dihedral angle. So you can either, one, shave the pedal hangers, two, shave the pedals. I don't want to do either of that, but it gave me spikes, so I don't know. I don't use that one that much anymore. It's nice to have a spare wheel, a secondary wheel, in case your main one goes down. What I should do is should, I should sell that V10 and get a V11. Uh, a V11. But the EUC market is not very good. So the EC market, it's very specialized and very niche. So if you don't sell your wheel for at least 50% off, you're not getting any offers. Like my Sherman, the MSRP, well, they don't make it anymore though, because it's a V3OG. You know, it's about three grand or so. Sherman Max is about 3,500, brand new. Which is overpriced now in these days, today's dollars. I got used for 1500 so half price, right? But then if I want to sell it, I won't be able to get 1500 for it anymore. It's a non-suspension wheel. Everything has gone full suspension. So I'd be lucky to get maybe a thousand or so. If I, uh, I find if I'm too far back on the pedals and I accelerate, I'm doing a weird crouching stance, which isn't as stable. It's more my weight is like over the front of the wheel. It's better if my legs are more up against the pedals, uh, the pads, 
front pads and are more upright. Still bend your knees, but... There's Gladstone. Let's see, this guy's not using a signal, so he's turning starting a certain way. Here's the high mode. This is the street I use. Because Vancouver doesn't have a good route to my home. I just use the IMO. Otherwise, I have to cut across Clarendon. this light. Next wheel, I want to upgrade to his suspension wheel, but I don't know if I want to go cheap with like a used V11, which I hear is a nightmare to do a tire change <coughs> and replace parts. And it's also fragile because it's just a saddle that's being suspended, like the uh, pedals are being suspended, not the whole wheel. <coughs> so I've seen a lot of cracked um, chassis, which is not very confidence inspiring. Go cheap with one of those for like 1500 or so, or um, save a lot of money and go wait for like a Sherman S, like a Sherman L or like a Lynx or a Patton. <coughs> Sherman is a gold standard for quality. In motion is not bad, but there's nothing really appealing. The V13 is just a monster, it's so heavy. So is Sherman, but it's just more usable and better build quality and disassembling is a lot easier for the tire changes. V11 is supposed to be pretty, V13 is supposed to be pretty good. Nice and smooth, you go faster, you get more confidence. When it's bumpy, you kind of clench your butt cheeks and then you slow down. But right now, my feet are fine because I was taking breaks. Every like traffic light, I sit down. Took a longer break at Granville Island just to rest your legs. <coughs> I like to ride a little earlier too, so it's not so late when I get home. I gotta watch out here. You can see how the road has just turned into like this weird kind of washboard, like long stretch of the patched. Yeah, 45th is fine until you get to this part. Then you want to stay in the middle. Because look at this. The camber is just way down there. You're in the ditch. Like, that's a good like foot drop from here to down. It just crests down. You're in a tram line and then crash down there. It leads. <clears throat> the ambulance here. Ugh. My braking is not fully there. I'm like jumping off the EC at the end. <clears throat> I'll be 
careful here because I have the tram lined. Okay, there's some huge, huge potholes there. <coughs> I'm definitely more confident now than when I was at the beginning of the ride. But still, my brake is not fully there. I'm gonna lean back more, throw, throw the EC forward. Sit down. <laughs> 